friends and enemies, welcome to the Sovereign Bitcoiner series where we'll share with you what I've learned on how to become a more sovereign Bitcoiner. And today we'll be latching on to my two previous videos. The first being how to download the source code, compile it and run Bitcoin Core. And the second is to download Tor and run it as a service for Bitcoin Core. Today's video will be doing VPN. And I am going to be using Mulvad VPN. I'm not going to recommend what VPN you should be using. I'm just going to say I use Mulvad VPN. And if you're going to use one, I would suggest do your own research. It only makes sense. And I'll explain why I like Mulvad VPN. And the reason why you should use a VPN is that it provides one extra layer of security. And if you already have Tor, having the VPN plus Tor, well, your, your node is extremely anonymous at that point. So it's, eh, you know, it's, it's an idea. If you want to be a sovereign, sovereign Bitcoiner, it's probably best to do this. So to Mulvad, why is it I like that? Well, it's anonymous accounts. When you create your account, they do not even assign you. They assign you a, a random number. There's no email address it's assigned to or tied to, no name, nothing. It's just an anonymous number that is randomly generated. That's your account number. They say there's no logging. It's externally audited. It's based in Sweden. So in terms of friendly jurisdictions, Sweden would be, in my opinion, one that would count to be a friendly jurisdiction. They don't have any paid reviews. I'm doing this simply because I like it and they're not paying me to do it. I have no affiliation with Mulvad. The price is good. The service is good. I like to use it. And of course, remember, do your own research and go from there. But so there you go. I mean, those are the simple the reasons why I like it. Plus, when you purchase an account, the price is pretty good. You can take a look at the pricing here. It's five pounds, sorry, five euros per month. And the same applies if you get a one year package or a one decade package, it's five euros, period. And depending on which country you go at, that's what the equivalency is in your neck of the woods. So in Canada, it's 7.34 a month, which is reasonable. You know, think about how much a cup of coffee costs these days. Everything's gone up quite a bit. Mulvad, pretty darn good value if you ask me. So in terms of setting it up, I'm going to just state that you could just go here to account and I'm going to create a new account just to show you what it's all about. I already have an account. And so what I'm going to be doing shortly is installing it on my other computer, the computer with the node on it. And from there, I'll show you the process and how you could set up Mulvad, so you go to create and you generate an account number and there you go, you get a random account number so that you make sure you get that, that information copied down somewhere, somewhere safe and you have to pay. The options to pay, really cool. <clears throat> so you could either pay on chain with Bitcoin if you wanted to, if that's your jam. So you just go here, I don't want to look at these two shit coins, but over here we have Bitcoin. You could just simply pay with that, generate the one time payment. And you can pay with that. I'm not going to do it. I'm just simply doing this for educational purposes right now. And just let it go. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. So I'm not going to pay for it. I'm just going to go back. And so the other option is you could pay with other. And so you could do this. You could pay with cash or debit cards. Also, the other option you have, you could use, if you really want to go... Uh, private, like it, it's, of course, paying with Bitcoin will be private. You can just go on Amazon. I'll post the link to this below, and you can get one of these here. They were sold direct from Mulvad B VPN, and you can select either a six months or five months, and it gives you the information that you need in order to punch it in, and then you get your account topped up. Every account you can get up to five devices, which is cool. So if you click on here, you can see all the different devices that you would have. So from one account, one of those five euros per month accounts, you can get five different devices, your phone, your laptop, your tablet, whatever it is, up to five, which is pretty good. So with that, we'll just mosey on over to my node and install it and show you how simple it is to get this moving. 
here we are back at our node, the computer running Linux, and we can just see right away <clears throat> that I have Bitcoin Core running. No issues, everything's running fine and running behind Tor. And as you can see in the Maldad website, it says that I am not using Maldad VPN, and I want to rectify that. I do want to run Maldad VPN. So the first thing we're going to have to do is click on Downloads. And we're simply not going to download the files. We're going to go through the process to check the GPG signatures. This is the proper way to do things, especially if you don't want to leak any information. This is good privacy hygiene. You should learn this process. Now, first, we have to check that we have the proper GPG version. We need 2.1 or later. So we just go to the terminal and type in GPG dash dash version. And oh, I can't type it in. There it is. And as you can see, I have the version that far exceeds the minimum. I need 2.1 and I have 2.2.40. So I'm good to go. And this is going to be for the Linux version, of course. Um, I'm not going to be dealing with the two Cuck OXs that are listed below. So number one, we're going to download and import the signing key. So just simply just copy and paste this into your terminal. Of course, I'll be putting this in the description below. So if you want to just copy this from my description, you're good to go. That was fast. And next we're going to have to, as you can see, it's there, the .asc file. Next, we're going to have to import the key by using this this, uh, this uh, text here, which copied into the terminal. And it may, you can see mine is unchanged because I've already done this. Yours might say change. So don't be worried if your text is output is slightly different than mine because I've already gone through this process. Next, it says trust the signing key. And we have to copy this text into another terminal window. Or the same terminal window and there you go and if you may want to compare the output with what's on the screen here what i have is going to be slightly different because i already did it it already says the trust and validity is ultimate your trust and validity will probably show as unknown that's what you want to have at this particular moment okay we can move on and we can now Configure it by typing in trust and press five. I trust and press Y and there you go. You've now trusted the key. So now you should see that the output is going to be slightly changed and it should now say the trust and validity as ultimate. So they should now match your output to what's on the screen on the website that's on my screen right there. So next we have to quit by typing Q and we verified that we have to download the app. So we just type in the first text there and it's going to download the app that we could install. So copy that and paste it into the terminal window. We wait a little bit. It's going to take some time. In the meantime, I'll just copy the next text that has to be downloaded. That's going to be downloading the signature. And just take a look at the screen. You see the red text is what I just downloaded. And we're going to copy the next text in. And that's going to be the signature. And you press LS. You can see it's the capital M file dot ASC. So we're all good to go. We could now just do the actual verification. Copy and paste this. And by doing this, we can confirm that it's a good signature. Again, we're going to compare the text. What we have on our screen to what's on the website here, as long as they match. You're looking at the assumed signed data and also ends with good signature from Mulvad. If you have that, you're in good shape. And finally, if you want to look at the plain text signing key and compare what's on the screen here, you can. I'm just going to do uh, less space and then uh, the Mulvad, the first Mulvad file with small m. And you can just compare for yourself if you want. This is just a uh, not a necessary step. This is just for your own uh, information. So you can just compare it. I mean, I look at the fir first few letters, they match. And then I'm going to scroll to the very end of the website and then scroll to the very end of my file that I'm uh, reviewing on my local computer. And the last few letters, they match. So I I'm satisfied with that. This is good to ensure that the Mulvad version you have is not tainted in any way, shape or form. So next we could go and install the file. So I double click the 
.deb file, and it's going to load up my launcher. It is very slow on this computer, so it will take some time. But it's okay, I'll speed things up. And we have now the install icon in the top right hand corner. Press install and wait it out. And again, it takes a while, I'll just speed things up. And now it's installed. I can click on launch in the top right hand corner to launch Mulvad VPN. And you'll see it's going to take some time. Eventually it's going to show up on my task or system tray in the bottom right hand corner. It's going to be a red icon initially. It does take some time. This computer is not very fast. There it is. It showed up on my system tray. And it's finally opened up. Press got it. Now I enter my account information. So if you already signed up for an account and you have account number, you could just enter it here. Carefully, of course, it's a very large number. You don't want to screw this one up. I've done so. Look, I had to go backwards. So keep going, keep going. And then log in. And we are in. So we have to first secure the connection. So before I get secured, I like to pick a location like the USA. So click that. And it's secured. Now, for all intents and purposes, I am now in USA. New York City, to be specific. So before we go through some quality of life changes, I want to just point out the next thing you can do if you want is you could refresh the Mulvad web page and you'll see now it's going to confirm that you are now running Mulvad VPN. And if you click on check for leaks, this is if you're running Firefox, this is a, uh, something you should do. You'll see that you'll have leaking DNS servers. So click on the settings button and then go privacy and security and scroll to the very, very bottom and click off. By doing this, you're closing those leaking DNS servers. Just refresh and you just confirm everything's go. Three greens, you are rocking. So you close off the windows we have open. And if you want, you could delete the files that you've downloaded. They're no longer needed. Just taking up valuable storage. That's done. And we can now open up Mulvad and do some quality of life changes to make it a little bit better for you to run. So you click on the settings button, click on user interface settings, start minimized is what I like to do. And there you go. If you want it, you could close your tour, sorry, your uh, core, uh, Bitcoin core, and then reopen that. That makes sure that it's running behind your VPN, should there be any questions or anything, this just closes the loop. It takes a while to close, so we'll just speed things up. So we have now Mulvad running. So if you want, click back to settings. Another quality of life issue, click on VPN settings. Launch at startup, auto connect, and local network sharing. I think you need a local network sharing if you want to connect your node with something like Sparrow. So definitely consider clicking that. I'd like to do it as well because I'm using this as a um, network to box where I'm going to be downloading stuff from my computer. But anyways, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll just continue on with this series in just a little bit.